Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. The gentlelady from New Mexico is recognized. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chair, you would, Mr. Chair, I have an amendment at the desk. Okay. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment number two to House Resolution 918, offered by Ms. Leisure Fernandez. Before the resolve clause, insert the following. Whereas, in the last impeachment proceedings against then-President Donald Trump, there was extensive evidence and thousands of hours of video footage of a violent attack on the Capitol that led to the deaths of five law enforcement officers and seriously injured more than 140 more. Whereas, the violent attack on the Capitol delayed a constitutional electoral proceeding while Trump, who incited the attack, watched it unfold for hours without intervening according, uh, according the testimony of Trump staffers before the United States House Select Committee on the January 6th attack. Whereas the evidence in the 2021 impeachment proceedings against then President Donald Trump showed that Trump sought to overturn the election and interfere with the pre peaceful transfer of power for the first time in the, in the United States history. Whereas such evidence led to a bipartisan impeachment in the House, a bipartisan vote of 57 senators to convict Trump in the Senate, and a federal criminal indictment related to the January 6th assault and efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Whereas in the 11 months since the Republican-led committees, the Committee on Oversight and Accountability, the Committee on the Judiciary, and the Committee on Ways and Means first began their investigations, Republicans have received tens of thousands of pages of private bank records, Department of Treasury, the National Archives, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and Internal Revenue Service documents, and dozens of hours of witness testimony, including Special Counsel Weiss and other high-ranking officials at the FBI, IRS, and Department of Justice attorney assigned to Hunter Biden's case. Whereas, despite the avalanche of information House Republicans received from the Biden administration, banks, and Hunter Biden's business associates, none of the three Republican-led House committees pursuing a Biden impeachment has found any evidence of wrongdoing by the president let alone an impeachable offense, whereas Senate Republicans who conducted their own investigation in 2020 of Joe Biden's conduct as vice president also did not find any evidence of wrongdoing, whereas the evidence, including bank records and repeated statements from witnesses gathered during the current investigation, has shown that President Biden fought corruption, was not involved in his family members' business dealings, and respected the independence of the Department of Justice. Whereas the Burisma conspiracy theory that has long been debunked, and in fact, the investigation has confirmed that as Vice President, Joe Biden successfully led a bipartisan and international coalition urging the Ukrainian government to address corruption. Whereas President Joe Biden chose to retain David Weiss, a United States attorney appointed by Donald Trump as the special counsel leading the Hunter Biden investigation, and it is, it is clear that Mr. Weiss has the full authority to investigate and prosecute Hunter Biden. Whereas, while the last Trump impeachment proceedings held public hearings, House Republicans have conducted nearly all of their investigation into President Joe Biden behind closed doors, have refused to publicly release all but two interview transcripts, and have repeatedly misrepresented the evidence, including witnesses' statements, to falsely accuse the president of wrongdoing. Whereas, as a loving father and a brother, Joe Biden has helped members of his family in their times of need. Whereas 46,300,000 Americans aged 12 or older, or 16.5% of the United States population, had a substance use disorder in the past, and two-thirds of Americans reported they or a family member struggle with addiction. Whereas addiction significantly impacts families whose loved ones suffer from substance abuse. And whereas loving a son who has struggled with addiction and other problems is not evidence of high crimes and misdemeanors worthy of a solemn impeachment inquiry. Now for there be it. General ladies recognized uh, to uh, explain or address her amendment. Mr. Chair, I offer this amendment to remind the American people that after 11 months, three different committees investigating and a mountain of documents and testimony, Republicans have no evidence of wrongdoing by President Joe Biden. Instead, the Republican-led investigation has proven the opposite, that this is political vengeance for the impeachment of Donald Trump. Republicans have bent over backwards to distort the truth because the twice impeached, four times indicted for former president, who currently has 91 felony charges pending in both federal and state courts, wants them to. While Republicans say they need this inquiry to gather yet more evidence, they are deceiving themselves. 
They just don't like what the extensive evidence they've accumulated so far actually proves. President Biden and his administration voluntarily handed over tens of thousands of pages of private bank records, treasury, and national archives documents. Biden administration officials from the FBI, the Internal Revenue Service, and the Department of Justice, along with Department of Justice special counsel attorney assigned to Hunter Biden case, have provided dozens of hours of sworn testimony. After extraordinary transparency from the Biden administration, the evidence proves that Biden, President Biden did not engage in any wrongdoing. The evidence proves that President Biden did not profit and did not engage in James or Hunter Biden's business. Further, President Biden respected, he respected the independence of the Department of Justice and retained David Weiss, the U.S. attorney appointed by President Trump as the special counsel leading the Hunter Biden investigation. The indictments this week of Hunter Biden prove, they prove that special counsel Weiss had full independent discretion to investigate and prosecute Hunter Biden free from political interference. But remember, Impeachment is about what the president does, not what his son may have done. Biden's respect for the Justice Department is in sharp contrast to Trump, who urged his Department of Justice to investigate his political opponents. President Trump's own Attorney General, Bill Barr, had to resign in protest as Trump weaponized the Department of Justice after losing the 2020 election. Biden's respect for the law, no matter the consequence for his son, is the exact opposite of Trump's declaration he will be a dictator and will purge our agencies of our civil servants if he believes they are his enemies or unfaithful. Republicans often talk about Burisa a far-fetched conspiracy theory, but Trump's own special representative for Ukraine negotiations, Kurt Volker, found that Burisma was based on a theory that, I quote, had been debunked, end quote. And there was, I quote again, no evidence to support it, close quote. The more than 39,000 pages of documents Republicans already received and the 62,000 on the way prove that President Biden follows the rule of law as he has done his entire career. He has fought corruption at home and abroad and has upheld his most sacred oath to the Constitution, an oath he has made 10 times throughout his dedicated career of public service. In contrast, we've seen House Republicans repeatedly conceal information hide it from the public, and selectively leak lies and innuendo that distorts the truth. While the America public, while the American public waits for Congress to do its job to fund our government and lower cost, extreme MAGA Republicans want an impeachment inquiry to create more division, more chaos. This do-nothing Congress is all about chaos. It's a do nothing but chaos Congress. The American people know what evidence of high crimes and misdemeanors looks like. We know what it feels like. Evidence of an impeachable offense looks like the January 6th insurrection, where violent mobs stormed the Capitol and threatened to hang Vice President Pence and kill Speaker Pelosi. They attacked us because Trump wanted to delay the certification and overturn the 2020 election. That violent attack on our democracy led to the death of five law enforcement officers and seriously injured 140 more officers. When you walk out of this room, look with kindness and gratitude in your heart at the Capitol Police protecting us. They know. They know what evidence of an impeachable offense looks like. They know what it feels like because they battled in hand-to-hand -hand combat. That's what impeachable offense evidence looks like. Ask yourselves, ask yourselves, what does my vote for the sham inquiry do to their sacrifice? You know, it's incredible 
197 Republicans voted against impeaching Trump for an insurrection that they witnessed and experienced firsthand as they ran for cover or barricaded themselves in their office. But now, they're going to be okay with continuing an impeachment investigation into Biden when a deluge of evidence shows there's no wrongdoing. Are you kidding me? On January 6th, Trump and the insurrectionists failed to overturn the election. The evidence of that day led to a bipartisan impeachment in the House, 57 senators voting to convict in the Senate, and a historic criminal felony indictment of President Trump. What we, the Republicans have done by bringing this inquiry is to highlight for every American to see two visions, two visions of what leadership for the greatest democracy in history looks like. The extreme MAGA Republicans' vision is that they must do all they can to bring back to power a president who brags about becoming a dictator, a president who conspired and then organized a violent mob to disrupt one of our most sacred democratic traditions, the peaceful transfer of power, a President Trump who desperately tries to punish his political enemies without any evidence of wrongdoing. Our democratic vision, and that of President Biden, is that no person is above the law. Our vision is of an American that respects the independence of the police, the courts, and our nation's justice system. Our vision is of a Congress that fights to make our communities better rather than using our power and our precious time in this chamber for vengeance and to sow chaos. The differences could not be more clear. Democrats impeached the president because he tried to overturn an election and destroy our democracy. Extreme MAGA Republicans are pursuing impeachment as political revenge because a man with 91 felony charges is telling them to do so. We heard the statements and quotes that our ranking member said, but there are so many more of President Trump's vengeance and his calls for revenge. I urge my colleagues to adopt this amendment so the record is clear that the evidence has been gathered, and that evidence proves that there is no need to continue this time-consuming political theater. I yield back. Thank you. Is there any further discussion or debate on the amendment? Mr. Chairman. Gentleman from Texas is recognized. I would note that we're here to talk about President Biden and an inquiry uh, re relative to President Biden. Um, one of the whereas clauses here in the amendment that is offered says, whereas in the 11 months since the Republican-led committee Committees, the Committee on Oversight and Accountability, the Committee on the Judiciary, Committee on Ways and Means, first began their investigations. Republicans have received tens of thousands of pages, private bank records, Department of Treasury, National Archives, Federal, FBI, IRS documents, and dozens of hours of witness testimony, including Special Counsel Weiss and other high-ranking officials at the FBI, IRS, and the Department of Justice, attorney assigned to Hunter Biden's case. Well, I think what's important here, and we're not here to litigate the merits of impeachment, but to simply uh, proceed with a process for an impeachment inquiry for this body, the House of Representatives, to be able to conduct its oversight function uh, when we have seen an extraordinary amount of stonewalling, contrary to what the ranking member said, uh, out of this administration. Uh, consider, for example, um, with respect to the IRS, Biden's Department of Justice has prevented two tax division officials, um, Mark Daly and Jack Morgan, from testifying, despite subpoenas. Um, now, this is particularly concerning given the indictment of Hunter Biden just this past week. According to these, uh, to the IRS whistleblowers, both Morgan and Daly were involved in the decisions to not charge Hunter Biden with some of his most egregious tax crimes. IRS whistleblower Shapley said in 2021 that Daly had agreed with recommendations in the report to charge Hunter Biden for crimes in tax years 2014 to 2019. In June 2022, however, Morgan and Daly reportedly gave a presentation on why DOJ should not, char not charge Hunter for the 2014 and 15 tax years. 
Well, that is particularly concerning, given the extent to which those have now been allowed to lapse with respect to the statutes of limitations. Morgan and Daly also have firsthand information about David Weiss's authority to charge Hunter Biden outside of Delaware, which could potentially contradict previous statements Weiss has made. On June 29th of 2023, the committees requested transcribed interviews with 11 DOJ officials, including Morgan and Daly. DOJ declined the request and multiple further requests. On September 14th, 2023, House Judiciary Committee issued deposition subpoenas for both Daly and Morgan. However, Department of Justice stonewalled the committee once again. Daly's personal counsel said the Department of Justice directed him not to appear. On November, 20, on November 1st, 2023, <clears throat> House Judiciary Committee issued a subpoena to Morgan that required his presence at a new deposition date. However, Morgan's personal counsel informed the committee that DOJ had directed him not to appear. <clears throat> now fast forward. December 7th, Hunter Biden's indicted. DOJ states, quote, a federal grand jury returned a nine-count indictment today, charging Hunter Biden with three felony tax offenses and six misdemeanor tax offenses. According to the indictment, Hunter engaged in a four-year scheme in which he chose not to pay at least $1.4 million in self-assessed federal taxes he owed for tax years 2016 through 2019 and to evade the assessment of taxes for tax years 2018 when he filed false returns. Okay. My colleagues on the other side of the aisle want us to believe that that's some standalone problem for the president's son. But here's the problem. Four months ago, the same David Weiss that we're talking about tried to bury the tax case against Hunter Biden. That's what happened. Um, at that point, offering a uh, no jail plea agreement um, on two relatively unimportant misdemeanors, uh, basically a deal. Uh, pretty much out of the ordinary. And the problem with that is, is that now suddenly Weiss has moved a different direction because the judge called it the deal out. Um, he couldn't rationalize the plea bargain deal that he gave Hunter, and now he's making the case in the very indictment that he just put forward. The fact of the matter is there's been an extraordinary amount of stonewall. This is one example of dozens that we could get into. And this is why the inquiry matters. This is why we should proceed with the inquiry. There are other issues that we could get into and raise, but to dismiss it and, and to just put aside and say there's been all of these investigations and there's been no issues that have been raised is just completely contrary to what anybody with eyes reading news accounts of what has occurred and looking at the indictment that was presented last week would understand. I yield back to the chairman. Mr. Chairman. The gentleman's recognized. Appreciate the gentleman engaging, um, but uh, let's be honest, uh, we're here because Donald Trump asked you, no, demanded that you be here today to bring this inquiry forward. That is, that is why we're here. Dozens and dozens of Republicans, and even Fox News hosts, let that sink in, have bluntly admitted that there's no evidence to support impeaching President Biden, and have instead lamented that pursuing impeachment is not good for the country. Uh, over the course of this year-long fishing expedition, because this is not beginning today, you've been doing this for over a year, um, uh, House Republicans have poured over tens of thousands of pages of documents and financial rec records uh, provided by the administration, have interviewed witnesses for dozens and dozens of hours, yet uh, they, nothing, nothing they have revealed has supported their wild conspiracy theories uh, and debunked uh, you know, the uh, allegations. Nevertheless, here we, here we are. But I think it's important uh, to, uh, to point out that, uh, that this is a waste of time. I'm going to give you the words of, of Republicans. Don't take my word for it. Speaker Mike Johnson reportedly told his own colleagues, quote, that there is insufficient evidence to initiate formal impeachment proceedings. Rep. Mike McCall admitted, we don't have the evidence. That's his quote. Ken Buck, our colleague, the evidence for impeachment doesn't exist right now. He also said, I haven't seen any evidence linking Hunter Biden's activities to Joe Biden that I'm not convinced that the evidence exists. Uh, Rep. Dusty Johnson said, there's a constitutional legal test that you have to meet with evidence when it comes to impeachment, but, but he has not seen that evidence. John Curtis, my bar for impeachment is incredibly high. For me, it's all about, is there an impeachable offense, and is there evidence of an impeachable offense? 
And when asked if he had seen anything that comes close to that bar, his answer was, quote, no. Daryl Issa, the former House Oversight Chair, said the actual uh, participation by the, vice, by the Vice President and now President that still has to be discovered and, and or nailed down. Uh, Lisa McLean, when asked if the House Republicans, after nearly a year of investigation, had uncovered any improperly influenced policy decisions by President Biden, said, quote, the short answer is no. I mean, I have, I mean, I, I, I could be here all day reading quotes from your colleagues, Republicans, who basically have publicly admitted this is a waste of time after a year, after a year. So let's, let's be honest. We are here because Donald Trump said, ordered you to be here. He wants to finish the job. We're not here because there's any smoke. Uh, we're, we're, we're here uh, basically because this is what the former disgraced president wants from you. Uh, and with that, I ask unanimous consent to insert into the record a, several pages of recent Republican quotes basically saying this is a, a, no evidence and a waste of time. Without objection. For any further discussion of the amendment, the gentleman from Colorado is recognized. I thank the chairman. You know, the gentleman talked about stonewalling. I want to read him a quote. Quote, finally, allegations of obstruction ignore historic questions of privilege, ongoing litigation on the matter, and the fact that many executive branch witnesses testified. Democrats cannot complain about lack of participation when they created an environment that made testifying untenable. The American people will have the opportunity to decide in November 2020. We should let them, end quote. I suspect the gentleman recognizes that quote. Those are his words when he voted against impeachment of President Trump in 2019. So let's not pretend that this is not anything but the farce that it is. I understand the gentleman's position regarding President Biden, but the notion that this has any semblance of credibility or legitimacy is bellied by the facts. And I, I, while I would hope that my colleagues would apply some coherent consistency <laughs> with respect to their views on impeachment, I'm not expecting that. But I, I, one thing that I, I certainly don't believe the American people can countenance is the notion that somehow this process is a fair one, or a transparent one, or an open one, or unnecessary one. Uh, Mr. Uh, and that I would yield uh, to my colleague from New Mexico. Thank you very much. And I think that in response to this, the very fact that there is an indictment of Hunter Biden shows that President Biden and President Biden's Department of Justice stood back. And I think it's important to actually remember that Attorney General Garden, Garland recently reiterated his basic truth about this case. And he said, I promised the Senate when I came before it for confirmation that I would leave Mr. Rice in place and that I would not interfere with his investigation. And I have kept that promise. He also testified that there had been no contact with the President or the White House about the Hunter Biden matter. So all that you are doing over there of saying something has happened with Hunter Biden and we must raise it, and this means we must have more and more and more documents. Oh my God, almost 100,000 pages of documents already, and you can't find a link? Because we need to remember that this is about whether or not President Biden has done anything in the last three years. It's not about his son's actions. Just as the impeachments of President Trump were about his conduct, and they weren't about how his kids or his son-in-law profited greatly from his presidency. They weren't about that three, $2 billion deal. They weren't about the money that those kids stole from a cancer charity. 
They were about what did President Trump do in office, not about his kids. And so this actually just proves the fact. So uh, with that, I'll yield back to my colleague. And, and I would uh, yeah, echo my colleague's remarks and would yield to the gentleman from Pennsylvania. Uh, the other thing that troubles me about this is that our colleague across the aisle has said that this has to happen because they're stonewalling. Stonewalling, despite the tens of thousands of pages of evidence, the testimony by private individuals, et cetera. But he's ignoring the fact that this claim that these IRS folks have disclosed misconduct has been debunked by their own witnesses, by people from uh, the US Attorney's Office, by people from the Department of Justice, by people from the FBI, by agents from the IRS. They've said these people were wrong, yet our colleagues across the aisle cling, cling to this misdirection and are using it to argue to their colleagues, oh, don't worry about it. This is just an inquiry. That's crap. I mean, this is, they, they have been given access to the evidence. They've been given unprecedented access to the evidence. Their own witnesses, their own documents have debunked the things that they are holding out there as evidence of some fictitious misconduct. So um, I yield back. And I yield back. Is there any further uh, comment or discussion of the amendment? A gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. You know, I think we just have to level set here. Um, we got to remember that we're here dealing with an inquiry. Uh, this has nothing to do with the former president. This has nothing to do with articles of impeachment. This resolution establishes nothing more than a process to follow the evidence and assert our Article I authorities. By the way, Article I authorities that Nancy Pelosi greatly reduced. But again, any talk that is outside of the process, outside of producing witnesses, outside of compelling compliance with subpoenas, for example, is irrelevant to the discussion. We're here simply talking about moving forward with the process. With that, I yield back. Any further discussion on the amendment? Hearing none, the questions on the amendment, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. 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 The opinion of the chair, the noes have it. Recorded vote. Recorded vote's been requested. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Burgess. Burgess votes no. Mr. Burgess, no. Mr. Vashenthaler. No. Mr. Vashenthaler, no. Mrs. Fishbach. No. Mrs. Fishbach, no. Mr. Massey. No. Mr. Massey, no. Mr. Norman. No. Mr. Norman, no. Mr. Roy. Mr. Roy, no. Mrs. Houchin. No. Mrs. Houchin, no. Mr. Langworthy. No. Mr. Langworthy, no. Mr. McGovern. Aye. Mr. McGovern, aye. Ms. Scanlon. Aye. Ms. Scanlon, aye. Mr. Nagoose. Aye. Mr. Nagoose, aye. Ms. Leisure Fernandez. Aye. Ms. Leisure Fernandez, aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Mr. Chairman, no. Clerk will report the total. Four yeas, nine nays. Those have it. The amendment's not agreed to it. Are there additional amendments? Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk uh, will report. Amendment number three to House Resolution 918, offered by Ms. Scanlon. Before the resolve clause, insert the following. Whereas, in their investigation, the Republican majority has received 38,000 pages of financial records, including bank records for the personal accounts of members of the President's family and other private citizens, over 2,000 pages of Treasury Department reports and tens of thousands of pages of records and emails from the National Archives from President Biden's service as Vice President. Whereas Hunter Biden has offered to testify publicly under oath as part of the investigation. Whereas House committees have heard dozens of hours of testimony from Hunter Biden's business partners and then Vice President Biden's financial advisor, three current U.S. attorneys and Department of Justice officials, and four current Federal Bureau of Investigation and Inter Internal Revenue Service supervisory special agents, and unprecedented testimony from Special Counsel David Weiss on an, on on an ongoing investigation. Whereas the FBI and Treasury Department have provided access to and briefings on highly sensitive law enforcement documents. Whereas the National Archives have produced 62,000 additional pages of then Vice President Biden's records this week. And in addition to the 20,000 pages already publicly available. And whereas at the end of June, Committee on Oversight and Accountability Chairman James Comer said in an interview, 
Every subpoena that I have signed as chairman of the House Oversight Committee over the last five months, we have gotten 100% of what we requested, whether it's with the FBI or with the banks or with Treasury. Now, therefore, be it. Gentlelady's 